Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craft Tastic, and I'm going to show you how to cut these page marks after they are laminated. Uh, you can cut them by hand, of course, but I'm going to show you how to cut them with the Silhouette Studio and using the Pix Scan Silhouette Mat. This is what it looks like. Okay. I ordered mine from Amazon, and I'll leave a link below for the mat. First of all, I need to laminate these, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in a pouch. I'm not going to do all of them, I'll just do a few. If you want to know how to make these using a template that I sell from my website, the video showing how I made these will be linked in the description box below. So I'm just going to put these in here and I want to make sure that I have enough space between them. And as usual, I like to line things up as straight as possible. But I want to make sure I have space between them to allow for the edge that will be created for the laminate that keeps the paper sealed inside. So I'm just going to do three of these for now. And then the two with the name on them. So... There we have that, and we're just going to run that through the laminator. Make sure your laminator is super duper hot. All right, so now it's laminated. Now this is where you use your pick scan mat. So I'm going to go ahead and place it on the mat just like you would for your regular cut mat you place it inside this box though and make sure that you everything is pressed down really well this may be a little problem where the laminate curl so I think I'm going to trim that off because I don't want it to get stuck in my silhouette or throw anything off so I'll just trim that off so it won't cause any problems then what you do is take a picture of the mat with your pieces on it so I'm gonna go ahead and excuse my cruddy camera but I'm gonna get over this as best as I can and take a photo okay then I want this photo to go to my that photo, I, I'm going to open that image up on my computer. So I'm going to set this aside, or actually go ahead and load it into the silhouette. Then I'm going to switch to my computer. Okay, so now I'm back in Silhouette Studio, and I have my photos from my phone are set up to automatically uh, save to my Dropbox, so that I can have access to them easily from my computer. So if you use Dropbox, that might be something you might want to try, and I'll leave a link to Dropbox in the description box below. So then that, that's a great backup for your photos. So if something happens to your phone, you're, you still have your photos, and it automatically uploads them. So anyway, I am going to go over here and open PicScan image. That is under the file menu. It's open pick scan image or control alt P. So then you get this pick scan menu on the right hand side and I'm going to import from file. So I just click that arrow to open it up and then I'm going to go find my photo and my camera uploads. And here it is. Now, it says no calibration profile could be found to match the photograph being imported. In cases where no calibration profile is used, the cut line accuracy can be adversely affected. I have not had a problem with this. So, I, I mean, I tried to calibrate before and 
I have issues, so I'm, I just left it alone. If you want to go through the steps that's, that are needed, then you're welcome to do that. But I didn't have any problems when I tried it initially, so I just skipped that process and import the image as is. So then it opens your image, and I have a lot of glare on this one. I probably should have turned my lamps off, but I can overlook that. So what I need to do is go back to my original cut files, and I use two different files for this. So this is one, and this is the other one. And again, we did these in a previous video. So I'm going to go and copy her over to my PicScan version. Just put her off to the side. And then I'm going to go and copy my name, page marks. Select both of them and copy them over. And I'm going to go ahead and save this just in case something happens to my computer. Um, I won't have to completely start over again. So I save periodically throughout these processes because I have been working on the computer several times and it just shut down or something happened. So and then I'm going to just select all these because I want to ungroup them. So I'm going to select all and go to Object Ungroup. I don't need the object. What I want is the cut line. So let's open up my cut menu, cut settings. And so I'm going to remove the fill on this so that I can see what I'm doing. And basically what I'm going to do is line this up over the graphic, let's see, let's remove the fill. Oops, we want none. So I'm going to keep my cut screen on so that I can see the red lines. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So I have my cut line and I am going to, actually I'm gonna leave the color in it because I think that's gonna make it easier to move it. And I'm just going to change the opacity so that I can see through it and see what I'm do actually doing and if I'm lining it up right. Okay. So I'm just going to tilt it a little bit and do my best to line it up over the photo. I think I need to tilt a little bit more. Okay, so that's good. It doesn't have to be extremely perfect, but it's close as you can get it. Now I'm going to offset this. So I need to leave room around the laminate so that the laminate stays sealed. So I have to allow room for the air bubble that's between where the laminate is actually sealed and where the paper is so as you can see you can kind of see the air bubble a little bit around here so we want to make sure we're outside of this little area here so that we don't break the seal so i'm going to select this right click and go to offset and my offset is set to 0.125 which is a quarter of an inch and i'm going to leave that I could make it a little smaller, but to start, I'm just going to leave it at that. Then you also have this area on the inside. And you can either just draw the line that you want. Or what I did previously when I did this is I made a copy of my page mark. So I'm going to copy that. Okay. Then I drew a square over the area where the opening of the page mark is. Let's fill that in so you can see the difference. Okay, so I just drew a square over, 
the opening of the page mark and now I'm going to select both of them so I go to the modify panel and I'm going to do divide and what that does is break these up into different shapes and so that gives me this inside piece separately you see there so make sure you use a copy of your actual page marker and then you can delete both of these you don't need them this is the piece that you need okay so you end up with just this piece here now we're going to do an internal offset so select our I don't know our opening piece and click internal offset and 0 0.039 looks pretty good um, you could adjust it if you want but I'm going to go with the 0 0.039 and then I just hit apply so we just need this little piece that was on the inside and we're going to bring it over here and again you can color these in because it's not actually going to print it's just going to show you know allow you to see where your um, silhouette is going to cut and it, it'll help you with working on the artboard so I'm just going to line that up so after I've lined that up and done my offset for the full piece I don't need this little piece on the inside here so I can move this to the next one and repeat the process pretty much so I line this up as best as I can over it then I right click do offset we got 0.125 and you can make this a little smaller I wouldn't go too much smaller then I'm just going to use this same little piece for the opening of the page mark make a copy of it bring it over here line it up And go to the next one. It's gonna move this over so we can create a our main offset. Then just copy this over. Do right click offset. Then we don't need this on the artboard anymore this was our template to create the offset for these so now you have a cut mark around the outside of each of these and you have the cut mark on the inside for the opening you don't need to delete the white if you want to delete the white you can but because you're not printing that won't that doesn't matter and even if you were printing white doesn't print so okay now we're going to move on to the name versions up here. So I'm just going to make a copy. And I'm going to turn it around and start getting ready to line it up. I can change, I'm going to change the color because it's easier to see through the white when you do the opacity. So I just put it to 50. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Line it up. Okay, now we're going to do our offset. So right click, offset then I need to go back and copy the little piece from the inside from the other ones luckily that little inside opening piece is the same on all of them so you don't you only have to create that one time let's zoom in so we can see and flip that around and line it up Okay. and I'm just going to go ahead and since I have that selected I'm going to go ahead and copy it again to the other version of the name page marker and place it in there line it up and I'm going to go back and get 
a copy of this one. I'm going to change the color to white and opacity to 50%. Oh, I didn't change the color. There we go. And zoom back in, flip this around so we can line it up. Then I'm going to right click and do the offset. And see, this is what I mean. Don't put them too close together. It may look like you have plenty of room, but you really don't once you set those offsets on. So I got kind of too close on this one. Okay, so now I need to remove these two top pieces. We don't need those. So we don't need any of the uh, opaque pieces. The inside pieces can stay as they are. Now we're ready to cut. To cut these, I don't remember what setting I used. I think I used the chipboard setting. And I did do double cut, pretty sure. So we're about to find out. So I've already loaded my mat. I got my settings. I need to make sure that my blade is the right blade. Yes, it is. Make sure that your blade is set to whatever you feel comfortable with. This does this five does not work for me. So I had to play around with my blade and you might want to just do some test cutting on the laminate before you even attempt this to find out what works with your silhouette because they are pretty different. So anyway, so I'm just going to cross my fingers and go ahead and send to silhouette. And I think the chipboard setting is really good because it goes slow. And you need for it to for your uh, blade to move slowly so that nothing gets caught. Okay, so now it's finished cutting. It's still on the mat. My fingers crossed. I hope it cut properly. I'm always skeptical when I'm using things like this, and so far, so good. Um, I think that chipboard setting really makes a difference. So let's remove that. And I know, at least on this one, that the inside already cut. So there we go. It cut just right. See here? You can see where it cut the inside piece. That one was a little close, but that's probably because I didn't line it up well. Yeah, because these, these others aren't close like that. So everything cut. Yes. I already took that one out. There it is. So let's put I try to protect this mat as much as possible. It does have some dust and lint on it. But I don't really want to have to buy another one of these too soon. So I try to keep it protected. Okay. So there we have it. They cut great. And if you want to make laminated page markers, then that is how you do it. To me, it's a lot easier to just use the scissors and trim them down. But if you want them to be perfect or if you're selling them, then... Yeah, that's how you do it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.